Fuses play a crucial role in protecting transformers from overcurrents and short circuits, and they also protect the electrical system from failed transformers. I'm Mac with Maddox, and in today's video, we're talking about bayonet fuses. Let's start with fuse basics. Fuses protect the system by breaking the circuit when exposed to dangerously high currents or temperatures. Fuses help us avoid situations like this or this. Now fuses usually blow for one of three reasons. The transformer becomes overloaded, an external force creates a short circuit, or three, an internal problem causes a short circuit within the transformer itself. Now let's look at how fuses work. To explain how a fuse works, let's look at the bayonet fuse, the most common fuse found in pad mount transformers. The bayonet fuses are a type of expulsion fuse which means they contain a thin fusible element that melts under high current or high temperatures. And as the element melts, the heat of the arc decomposes a boric acid lining on the inside wall of the fuse, which creates a gas that extinguishes the arc and prevents power from continuing to flow. The fuse sits inside of a cartridge, which is attached to a holder. That holder slides into the wall of the transformer tank and sits below the transformer oil. Bayonet fuses are the most popular pad mount fuse choice because they're cheap and easy to replace in the field, just like this. Bayonet fuses can be either the current sensing type, which simply blow under high overcurrent conditions, or what they call dual sensing, which means they're designed to also blow when the oil inside the transformer gets too hot for instances where the transformer has become too hot to operate safely, but there might not necessarily be an overcurrent. To guard against overloading and short circuits, make sure your transformer fuses are sized properly. To properly size a fuse, you should choose a fuse with a suitable voltage rating for the rated voltage of your transformer. Ensure the fuse can handle the transformer's initial inrush current when it's first energized. The fuse must also have a current rating greater than or equal to the current rating of the transformer. And finally, make sure that the fuse can safely interrupt the maximum short circuit current that could occur in the transformer. Sizing a transformer fuse correctly is critical. If the fuse is too small, it'll fail before the full KVA is achieved. If it's too large, it might not protect the transformer. As always, check the manufacturer's literature before selecting a fuse. Now, bayonet fuses are not often used as the sole means of protection. They're usually connected in series with either backup current limiting fuses or isolation links to provide comprehensive protection for the transformer. Let's look at how these devices work together. Backup partial range current limiting fuses, or CLFs, interrupt dangerous fault currents by forcing the fault through several sand-filled compartments, quickly stopping the current flow. As you can see here, this fuse is attached to the bayonet fuse by this wire. The fuse only activates if the fault currents exceed the rating of the bayonet fuse. As its name suggests, the CLF is a backup fuse that only covers a partial range of overcurrent, specifically the very high short circuit types of current. Its job is to handle what the bayonet can't. The bayonet fuse interrupts lower level overload currents, while the CLF is only there for very high short circuit currents. Combined, the bayonet fuse and the CLFs provide a full range of protection. Now, it's important to note that CLFs are not intended to protect the transformer itself, but rather to protect the electrical system as a whole from a failing transformer. And once a CLF operates, it's almost certain that the transformer itself has already failed. Isolation links are used in conjunction with bayonet fuses when the transformer is relatively small and the available short circuit current is low. During a transformer failure, isolation links create a physical break in the circuit by melting. Isolation links are usually attached to the bayonet fuses like this. Now, isolation links are not actually fuses. Fuses have the ability to safely break the circuit and prevent excessive current flow from causing damage to components in the system. This is known as interrupting capacity. Isolation links don't have this ability, so they don't function as overcurrent protection like bayonet fuses. Instead, the isolation link's sole purpose is to melt during a transformer failure, effectively isolating the transformer from the rest of the system and preventing accidental re-energization. If you don't have an isolation link and the transformer fails, a line crew could accidentally re-energize the failed transformer by simply replacing the bayonet fuse, which would be dangerous. Isolation links prevent that from happening. Hope you found this video helpful, and if you want to learn more about transformers, 
subscribe to our YouTube channel, and let us know in the comments if there's Transformer topics you'd like us to cover. Thanks.